First, though, when the Senate decided to delay Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation vote for a week in order to enable an FBI investigation, everyone who was not Jeff Flake understood the point of it. The investigation itself was irrelevant. For Democrats, the only purpose was to buy time so that new people, some of them anonymously, could make allegations against Kavanaugh. That's exactly what happened, of course, and we've been the first to scoff at some of these claims because some have been frivolous, unfounded, some have been absurd. But tonight we must tell you a new and troubling story has emerged that could alter the trajectory, not simply of the Kavanaugh nomination, but of the history of this country. It is a story of a young man, outwardly respectable, but so morally distorted within, so addled by chronic dependency on draft beer, the witnesses say he committed a particularly heinous form of assault in a public place. This man, this monster in human form, once tossed an ice cube at someone in a bar. Yes, an ice cube, the perfect weapon. In solid form, deadly. And then within hours, it melts and evaporates into the air. All physical evidence turns to vapor. There are no fingerprints. It's diabolical, the perfect crime. And frankly, from a constitutional standpoint, it is disqualifying. Now, we'll concede that we missed the significance of this story at first, but the other networks were on it long before we were. Watch their coverage. Police documents that show that Brett Kavanaugh threw ice in someone's face, <clears throat> threw ice in someone's face. <clears throat> accused him of throwing ice, <clears throat> accused Kavanaugh of throwing ice on him. The nominee threw ice on him. Accused him of throwing ice on him for, quote, some unknown reason. Ice gate. Well, the founders, the framers of our Constitution anticipated this very moment. Article 3 of the Constitution, in words well known to every first-year law student, are unequivocal on the subject, quote, whoever shall throw ice in a tavern is disqualified from service in the federal judiciary, end quote. Game over. And yet, ladies and gentlemen, there is more tonight. A former Yale student called Tad Lowe, who apparently overlapped with Brett Kavanaugh in school, has contacted the FBI with a brand new outrage. Lowe says that at one time at a frat party, some fraternity brothers hired a prostitute to put on some kind of show that Lowe found offensive. Now, what does this have to do with Brett Kavanaugh, you might wonder? Well, as Lowe concedes, nothing directly. Quote, I can't say for certain that Judge Kavanaugh was present in the frat house. And yet, and this is the critical part of this story, Brett Kavanaugh may have been in the state of Connecticut when this happened. The very same state at the very same time that people in a fraternity house were doing things that Ted Lowe didn't like. Need we say more? Totally and utterly disqualifying. Still confused? Watch CNN. I'll explain. There have been a lot of stories like this lately, you may have noticed. Julie Swetnick, for example, claims that 37 years ago, for some reason, she went to 10 gang rape parties in a row in suburban Maryland, and that Brett Kavanaugh may have been at some of them. What did Brett Kavanaugh do at these parties? Well, Swetnick signed a sworn statement suggesting that Kavanaugh and friends added drugs and alcohol to the punch that facilitated the rapes that took place at these parties. Now, that's a very serious charge, except as Swetnick, Swetnick just explained in a televised interview, she didn't really mean it. I saw him around the punch, I won't say bowls, or the punch containers. I don't know what he did, but I saw him buy them, yes. Well, you've heard Democrats talk a lot recently about how Brett Kavanaugh may have lied under oath. There's no evidence for that. There is now, though, quite a bit of evidence that Julie Swetnick just did. Democrats don't care. They're not interested in finding out because, hey, whatever works, power is the point. And yet they should care. Sexual assault is a horrifying crime, no matter who commits it. All decent people understand that. False claims trivialize the offense, and there have been a number of widely publicized false claims over the past 15 years, and they undermine the many assault victims who are telling the truth. They make the search for justice seem political, which it never should be. And worst of all, they are making the rest of us nearly as cynical as professional Democrats already are. That's a high cost. Molly Hemingway is a senior editor at The Federalist, and she joins us tonight. So, Ice Cube Gate. Is this one of those moments that looking back on it 15 years from now, we're going to cringe in embarrassment that adults with college degrees could have taken something like this seriously? I would hope that we look back on this and cringe in embarrassment. I'm worried that this is the direction that things are going and that this type of attack 
will be used to discredit anyone that the media feels is a political enemy. And what you've seen, I mean, yes, Ice Gate is a ridiculous story. And I want to clarify, the claim is that he may or may not have thrown ice, which is even more ridiculous than that he might have thrown ice. Right. And, and to make this be a big explosive expose is ridiculous, but all of them have been kind of increasingly ridiculous, and none of them have had supporting evidence. And so this is a very dangerous path to go down, and I'm worried that unless people really take a strong stand against this type of reporting and against this type of uh, media campaign where you just throw as many stories out there as possible, never mind the fact that they are uncorroborated, unsubstantiated, or patently ridiculous, that they will continue in the future. So, but this is an asymmetrical event. So on the one side, you have people who are willing to do anything and lie about it. The Washington Post, for example, a purely political operation funded by the world's richest man, writes stories for their political effect. That's the point. And yet Republicans are playing by a set of rules devised in the 18th century, and they're very literal. Well, there's a story, we must take it seriously. At what point do Republicans say, you know what, this is a lie, I know the game, I get the joke, I'm not playing along. Right. There's a difference between joining with them in, in a very bad game where you attack people based on what they did in exactly. high school and otherwise. But also, you, that doesn't mean that you have to put up with it or go along with it or treat these things as, as sane even. I mean, a lot of these allegations never should have been promulgated by the media to begin with. People are saying, oh, well, we put this person on air so we can all see that she's ridiculous. Well, that's true. You can see that some of these allegations are ridiculous when, when you show light on them. But there should be a basic standard. I mean, this is a human being who is being torn apart through this process. And then also, even if they're acknowledging that some of the stories are ridiculous, at the same time, they're putting forth stories of, that are ridiculous on their own. And so there's just a lot of problems overall. So why, I mean, final quick question, but why does it fall to Lindsey Graham, of all people, to be the only member of the United States Senate to say that out loud. Are there no other members who feel an obligation to protect their voters from false charges and to protect the country from falling into some kind of mob rule situation, which it is? I think there's a very frustrating moment for a lot of people of goodwill, whether they're left or right. They see what's going on. They know it's wrong. And yet so many people who they expect to be leaders in Washington, D.C. or otherwise are behaving as if what's going on is completely acceptable. Yes. More people than Lindsey Graham should be standing up and saying, halt the madness. This is insane. This is a real family. This is a real man. And this is a real country that has standards, and we are not living up to those no standards. No people would like to be protected from this stuff. They're exposed and in danger, and their representatives don't seem to care. Molly, thank you very much. Thank you.